What's up guys, War here, and today we're gonna bring you an Apex Legends Season 14 settings video. Now I know it's been a while since I've posted uh, some Apex content, but we're gonna be doing some more like gameplays and things of that nature, and not so much guides and stuff like that, but I did wanna bring you guys my settings for Season 14 because I know people have been asking, especially with all the other content we've been putting out. So I wanted to make this video guys, so I'm gonna bring you my settings and just like give a rundown of these. I'm not gonna go too in depth in any of these. We're three years in, 14 seasons in, so a lot of these you guys should know. But if you do guys have questions, let me know down in the comments below if there's anything that you need a little bit more um, clarification on. So let's hop right into it. So gameplay, uh, interact, prompt style, compact, button hints. I like them on, but you can turn these off if you really want. Uh, crosshair damage feedback you want this off the reason being is because with the x or the x in the shield icon it's going to put an x over the enemy that you're shooting so you want to be able to have that off just to clear up space on your screen damage numbers stacking i like this over floating or and or both because it gives you a more exact detail of how much damage you've done so it's easier to communicate with your teammates ping opacity default you can do faded if you really want to but defaults just fine the obituary is definitely on you want to see how many people are dying or if you're in tournaments and stuff like that just to see you know kind of who's dead and who's not dead mini wrap rotation i have this off weapon cycle um on empty off you want this off i've gone into detail in other videos about this but when your mag is empty and you're completely out of ammo if you have this on it's going to auto swap you you don't want that you want to have that off so you can swap naturally with your button input so turn this off i have auto sprint on because i play on controller I think it's just easier. Plus, I don't have to click, um, you know, R3 all the time when I'm moving. Um, so I like auto sprint on. Double tap, sprint, turn this crap off. Nobody ever uses this. Jetback control, if you're a Valkyrie main or a player, definitely have this on hold instead of toggle. That way it gives you a lot more control over your uh, jetpack. Incoming damage feedback. I like it in 2D. You could do 3D if you really wanted to. Uh, don't do both. It just looks weird. But uh, 3D or 2D is fine, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Um, taking damage closes death boxes or crafting menu have this off what this does is that when you're in a box and you're taking damage that way you're still able to get an armor swap off if you have this on as soon as you take damage you're instantly being put out of the box so have this off hop up pop up on or excuse me off streamer mode i like it off but a lot of people like to go incognito for some reason to have their names prevented it doesn't matter people can still see your account it it makes no difference you might as well just let people know who you are anonymous mode and uses sharing both off performance uh display on i like this just to see how many frames i'm getting see if i'm connected my ping and all those things that is uh put in the top right hand corner when you're playing communication filter i have this on everything reticle i have it customized which we have inside of our um startup text inside of origin you can set this so that way mine's green or no mine's uh orange every time now but you can go in and change this if you guys want you guys can see mine this pops up the same every single time i play and then of course laser sights in this new season you can change these colors as well i just keep it on red hip firing i mean you can kind of see the laser but it's still the same it just makes it better uh, and then everything here colorblind mode off if you like that on to change it i would recommend uh try tritonopia but i like it off just for the og stuff um subtitles off subtitle size normal and everything else off okay let's hop into we'll do controller last guys so let's hop into our video settings we got full screen always aspects ratio whatever your monitor is minus 16.9 1920 by 1080 so i keep it the same some people do stretch like fade and some other people panders they do they do it stretch if you guys like stretch that's fine me if it looks really weird to play on so i don't so i just keep mind the resolution of my screen Brightness at 50%. I don't ever change this. Some people think that there are some spots in certain maps where it's just too dark and hard to see, but I disagree. Basic brightness is just fine. FOV at 110. I like this because you can see a whole lot more. Now, I have seen a lot of people do 104, 106, and then uh, I've even seen people do 100. It's, it's totally preference, but I like the 110 just so I can see more. Uh, FO ability scaling, turn this off. Okay, so what this does if it's enabled, if you're playing a legend like Bloodhound and you use the alt, what happens is that Bloodhound's ultimate turns your FOV to 110. So if my FOV is 100 and I'm used to playing on 100, but I'm playing Bloodhound and this is enabled, this is when I pop his ultimate, it shoots me to 110, which is going to be way different than what yo, you're yo, used yo. to and just change it. 
Hey, hold up, buddy. I'm in the middle of a video. One sec. All good. Um, so you want to turn this off. You want to turn this off. You don't want FOV ability scaling on. Uh, sprint view shake minimal. Don't get sick while you're playing. I have V-Sync off. You don't really need this. Uh, V-Sync, just turn that off. NVIDIA Reflex, enable plus boost. Anti-aliasing, TSAA always. Now, texture streaming budget and filtering is going to be a lot dependent on what your GPU is for your PC. Uh, I have six gigs of RAM on my video card, so I choose to do about half that. You could do one below. So if you had eight gigs, maybe do six. But I do three just so that way it's half and I still get really good uh, performance in the game still visually looks really good. Texture filtering, same thing. You start on times eight, but I like it on times four. It just looks better. And then everything else from ambient uh, occlusion quality down, I either have it low, disabled, or turned off. Impact marks, I like high just because it looks cooler, but everything else is off, guys. So uh, audio, master volume 100%, sound effects 100%, incoming voice chat 100%. Uh, you want to have push to talk on instead of open mic but i play on controller so i have to have open mic on and then all these other ones i just keep them at 20 percent, so it's relatively low so it's a little bit easier to hear everything okay <clears throat> let's get into the bread and butter of why you guys clicked on the video so controller button layout i have default if you don't have a scuff or paddles or anything with paddles or anything like that i highly uh, suggest button puncher uh, or Ninja. A lot of people like these two. Button Puncher is probably the, um, or not Button Puncher, a button, button Jumper, Bumper Jumper. Because L1 is Jump, X is Tactical, and then uh, you can change these. It just makes it really easy for players to use when they don't have paddles. But I keep mine on default because I have paddles, so it makes it real easy. Stick layout, layout, also default. You can customize this if you want. Default is just the better way. Now, here's something that changed this season, guys, going in. So, tap to use and reload is always preferenced. Because then you don't have to hold a reload and you don't have to hold the tap or anything. This was a big problem for controller players like myself. Especially when you're behind knockdown shields or behind doors. Now, season 14, they've implemented, Respawn has implemented a way to be able to tap to reload or use behind a knockdown shield or holding a door so you don't open it or attempt to revive. It's an interact prompt that pops up on the screen. So just pay attention to that if you're on controller. Otherwise, tap to use and reload. Crouch, always toggle. If you're on controller and you want to try to bunny hop, definitely put it on hold. Aim, always hold. Survival but slot. I have this off, but if you like it, you have it on. Then it's just easy. Use the D-pad and just pop it, but I like it off, especially if you want to spin kunais or use your, um, your heirlooms. Makes it look really good. Trigger dead zones, I have this on none. You could do default, but I like none. I just want it, to, it feels a little bit more snappy um, when I'm aiming and stuff like that to shoot. So I have it off. Menu cursor speed, this is gonna be subjective. This is all on you. I like mine right here. I always go back and forth between about right here to right here, just depending on how I'm feeling um, with my armor swaps for the day. If I feel like I'm doing them too slow, I turn this up. Uh, but if it feels good, then I keep it about between this bar. So. But the higher it is, the faster you'll be able to move in, in between boxes. So, again, just start here probably at the edge of this bar and then move it up. Now, I'm going to turn my ALCs off real quick. For those who play no ALCs and you're not comfortable with them, this is what I suggest. This is what I run if I'm not running ALGS settings or ALC settings. I run 5, look, and default ADS 3. This is very comfortable on classic response curve. Per optic settings are all the same, except for two and three at four, and then four up is always five, just so you can move around much easier and track your targets. So I would recommend starting uh, here at four, three, if you want to use normal settings and then go up. You know, uh, Gent uses six, five, way too fast for me. Uh, four, four is also very good. Players like Daltouche use this. Uh, but I like five because it makes me look a lot better in default on look ADS when you're aiming. Real easy, can still track, no problem. Okay, and it's made me a lot better in my PK shots. So, 5-3 classic, look dead zone, none, small, off, off. Now, if you're a psycho and you want to do ALCs, this is what I recommend. This is what I've been using, and this is fantastic. 
So dead zone, 5%, outer threshold, 1%, response curve, 10. Proctic settings, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay? Now yaw speed and pitch speed, 320, this is gonna be about a five, and 180 is a in between a three and a four. Turning yaw and pitch, 30 a piece, because this gives us a little bit more acceleration when we're looking. ADS, yaw speed, 115, pitch speed, 80. Now this is gonna be about a four ADS, and then 80 pitch speed is definitely a three. Now I have extra turning yaw at 45 and then pitch at 30. This just gives a little bit more boost when you're tracking and you're shooting against someone who has really good movement. It makes it a lot easier to track them. And then the other two are off on both. And then of course, target comp and melee comp both on. Okay, if you guys want in-depth detail on what each of these do, let me know, maybe I can make a video about it, but these are the ALC settings and these absolutely shred. So try them out, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really appreciate it. So that is gonna do it for my ALC settings for season 14, my controller settings, my graphic settings, all that good stuff. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to drop a like. Let me know down in the comments if these have helped you, etc. cetera. Um, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, guys. We got a lot more content coming your way as far as Apex and Diablo 3. So I appreciate all the support. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.